Gaudete, Gaudete, Christus est natus, ex Maria Virgine, Gaudete. Holy Scriptura does not teach that we cannot learn from church history. It does not teach that the church is insignificant. We need to remember this. We stand on the shoulders of giants. Giants. Better men and better women than we are. And we can learn from church history. Let us, as Jeff Jeff Durbin said, learn from church history. Let us examine how the Holy Spirit has led the Christian church into truth, especially in the early centuries of Christianity. The Holy Spirit did not lead the church to hold the doctrine of Sola Scriptura for 1,500 years. Okay, so did the Holy Spirit really lead the church into Sola Scriptura? Is the Holy Spirit really leading the church into truth if, if Sola Scriptura is true? When you look into the writings of the church fathers, as, as we just did at a service level, um, and what they saw as authoritative for, for the Christian, it more so coincides with the Catholic paradigm, scripture, tradition, magisterium. In, in fact, you even have writers as St. Irenaeus, uh, like we quoted, saying that tradition would be sufficient in itself had the apostles not written anything. And as uh, both scripture and tradition are handed down and perpetuated by the church, it is, it is the church that, uh, that identifies what belongs to the deposit of faith and interprets what belongs to the deposit of faith. This theology of the deposit of faith that is seen in the scriptures uh, is later expounded upon in the writings of the early church, who were taught by the apostles. And, and they said even more explicitly that the deposit of faith is not restricted to the, the, to the written word alone. This automatically excludes the doctrine of sola scriptura, at least historically, since the earliest known way that the successors of the apostles understood authority for the Christian life was not that the scriptures alone were the sole infallible authority. Instead, it was the teachings of the apostles, whether handed down orally or in written form. Now, if either one of these paradigms is of apostolic origin and and divine origin, then we don't have the freedom to change it. So, which is more likely uh, to to have happened? The sola scriptura is of divine origin, and the early church immediately fell away from using that as their paradigm, or the word of God as handed down through scripture and tradition is the authority for the Christian life, and then that is attested to in the early uh, church. I I think it's just a little bit more persuasive to to believe in that paradigm over the sola scriptura, because I, I just don't see a whole lot of evidence for that, especially early on. So historical inquiry reveals that no early Christian group is recorded to have operated with a, with the notion of sola scriptura. Now, it may be your position that the church very soon fell away from using the scriptures as the final authority after the apostles died. Uh, but but I ask you, would why would you trust the the church's preservation of the scriptures and of their judgment of the of the New Testament canon? Uh, which is based upon their prior knowledge of apostolicity and consistency of doctrine, when they could not even get this this fundamental doctrine right. If they saw these oral traditions coming down from the apostles, but didn't see Sola Scriptura coming down from the apostles, I just... Which one has more scriptural, historical, and, and, and patristic uh, precedents? Do you see why the, the Catholic notion of authority is at least a plausible interpretation of the data? Or perhaps you believe that there was a church that uh, survived underground, of whom we have no historical documentation due to their suppression, who did in fact operate with a Protestant paradigm of uh, scripture alone as the, the authority. Well, then you're free to believe that, of course, uh, but that is in spite of the evidence. Uh, not because of it. So you might want to rethink your unfalsifiable theory. Uh, here, here's another contention that I have. So the church during the, the time of the apostles was not operating by scripture alone. Uh, James White says this is because the apostles were receiving revelation, but it changes now for us uh, who live in the post-apostolic, post-revelation church. Okay, that's your theory. When did this change occur? Uh, at the death of the last apostle? Okay, so uh, did their oral teachings lose authority after they died as well? Uh, why, why would this change not be documented or anticipated? Uh, so long as we're still alive, you listen to us orally and in writing, but when we die, just forget what we taught you orally. That might be um, a little reductionistic of an argument, but the point, the point comes across that 
it seems absurd that the things which people remember the apostles teaching don't have authority anymore once the apostles die. I, I just, I, I, I just don't see it. Ex Maria Virginia.